Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining us today. In this episode of The Diff, we will discuss a rather new topic and that is building multiplayer virtual reality applications. Today, we will learn about the platform SDK multiplayer features, the open source shared spaces sample and hand gameplay showcase sample. We will also have another episode where we will dive deeper into the SDK, the shared spaces sample in Unity and so much more. And with me today is Eric who is a software engineer on the VR developer environment engineering team to tell us more about building multiplayer VR apps in Unreal. Hi, Eric. I'm super excited to have you here with us. Could you please tell us a little about yourself and what you work on? So, uh, yeah, I'm Eric Lusso. Um I've worked in many industries uh, over the years. And um, in 2002, I started working in uh, game development, uh, worked on Massively multiplayer online games, mostly. A reboot of Ultima Online first um, at Origin Systems. Uh, then I joined um, uh, Sony Online Entertainment. I worked on a number of expansions. Then I joined uh, Red 5 Studios, where um, we were building yet another MMO. And uh, a few years ago, a, a bit abo- a, more than two years ago, I joined uh, Facebook at the time. It was called Facebook. It's called Meta now uh, at the Oculus, uh, in the Oculus division. Julie, that's, that's what we're going to talk about today, right? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for the introduction, Eric. And yes, mm-hmm. uh, let's talk about the samples. So the shared space is samples. So tell us what the sample is about and what motivated its creation. The idea was, uh, okay, we have... We have our dev services. They have created those new ways of um, identifying where people are in VR. And, you know, like at the beginning of a metaverse idea where you can be in different applications, but you you have something that binds them together where you know about specific titles, specific destinations inside those titles. Um, And uh, so... We joined that that um, um, uh, that project. Uh, we start working on a sample. So what, as we as we do this, um, we start digging deeper and deeper into what we have and what are the available services. So on the one side, for Unreal, we have the label of your platform, the low level C APIs that are uh, readily available. And those are kept more or less up to date on our UE4 branch. So, so that's one thing. On top of that, um, the um, Oculus had built a, an Unreal uh, online subsystem. We call that uh, OSS. And what we noticed pretty early was that um, that was not a good place for the new APIs that we had in Libo VR platform. So one solution, or the first solution, or the, the first decision we made was Um, we are going to drop the Oculus OSS. It's not maintained. Uh, It's a bad fit for all these other APIs. And uh, it's hard to maintain. So that's how we started. So no OSS. We start a plugin and we start implementing all the uh, the interfaces that we needed and with the proper callbacks and and all those nice things. So that's, that's how we started. Yeah, absolutely. There seem to be so many moving parts. Like, I'm, I'm kind of curious, like, what are some of the use cases that like, developers should keep in mind when they're designing some of these VR multiplayer applications? I know you gave some use cases. So, yes. like, are there some points that they should keep in mind when they design multiplayer VR apps, like, right from the get-go? Oh, yes. Um, first of all, it's um, when you develop for Quest, First, first question you have is, what can I run in one given headset in a multiplayer title? How many people can be together? It really depends on how taxing it is on the CPU, how much traffic you send back and forth between players, and how precise you want your title to be. There's so many questions, right? So people have to build it, and they have to optimize, and they have to assess, okay, this is doable, this is not doable. Um, so that's the first question, you know, where, where is the code going to run? Do I need a dedicated server running in a data center? Uh, can I run on headset? Can I run part of the experience with host on headset and other experiences on a dedicated server? You can mix and match. You can do all sorts of things like that. 
Of course, they have the usual other um, content questions, the complexity of your environments, the complexity of your textures. Uh, you have to you have to deal with that. Do I bake everything? Do I like the Unreal Engine? Uh, do all that magic? Uh, can I afford it on my headset? Uh, what is it? What What is fascinating with VR is that a number of new experiences are possible. Um, I think another project we worked on was uh, doing hand tracking. And also we built another system, another layer on top with that would uh, recognize gestures. Uh, that's that's on the hand gameplay. Uh, it's it's in there. You People can go and explore that and uh, see what we did there. Uh, they can use that as a starting point and start exploring what's possible. I mean, ex- yeah. it's going to make it definitely more accessible and inclusive for everybody to use these apps. Yeah, I think so. I think so. I think uh, there's a number of things there that uh, people could... Uh, definitely take advantage of for communication. Thank you so much, Eric, for all these helpful insights. And thanks for all the amazing work that you and your team do. So before we end this episode, do you have any suggestions or guidelines for developers who are just getting started with multiplayer? Like- uh, really, the cool stuff is in the C++ and Blueprint code that we have on GitHub. So yeah, you next step is really uh, you get that and you try to build it yourself. You try to... Uh, go through all the, um, the hoops of creating on the dashboard, uh, the Oculus dashboard, you create your application. Then you go on the platform services and you create your destinations. That's very important because you need, there's a lot of stuff that I've not talked about yet uh, that, uh, that is right there on the dashboard where uh, you, have, you have a deep link message. In our case, destinations map to levels and that mapping is stored on the dashboard where you have a map field that indicates or level, I don't remember, but I think it's map that indicates the name of the level that this corresponds to. So uh, that's, that's pretty um, uh, important for people to use uh, and understand how that works. There's a number of other fields. Uh, one indicates whether the level is a lobby or not, or the destination is a lobby or not, whether it's a public match or not. Now we produce the C++ um, uh, plugin for Unreal that is targeting Unreal really precisely, both for blueprints and for the C++ calls. And all the models are there. Everything that is public is in there. Hopefully only what is public is in there. <laughs> and um, and, and this, this will be in sync with the LibOVR platform and will provide to uh, our developers full access to the LibOVR platform, tightly bound to it, up to date, and um, free of the OSS constraints. So that's a very, very good starting point. Try to grasp what's going on. Open up those blueprints. Look at what is going on. Go look at your uh, shared spaces um, mannequin code. Uh, the um, the code for sp- spawning players and how we make sure that when you cross a door, you spawn just next to that door. That's a lot of logic in there. Explore all that. Try to grasp what we're doing. That's very important. Now, on on the dashboard side, there's some th- there's a number of um, um, uh, things there that you can use that are not necessarily trivial. And maybe maybe one thing that gets me every single time, every single time it gets me, it's the um, data use checkup. Check it's it's uh, when you create an application, you have to go, you have to go in there and indicates that uh, first of all that you have a privacy policy for your users and and that you're going to um, and that you want to allow your application to be able to see, for instance, the user IDs. It's unique per title, so it's not really, uh, you cannot cross-check between applications, but uh, um, that you can see those things, that you can see their names, that you can invite friends. If you do not check those boxes, you will wonder why, why is this not working? I'm telling you that as a good advice. Um, don't do like me, just just go check those boxes on, on the dashboard. <laughs> yeah, those are great suggestions uh, and great resources for our developers. Yes. So with that, We'd like to conclude this episode of The Diff. And thank you, Eric, for providing us with such great insights into the VR platform SDK, multiplayer features, all its features, the super useful resources, such as the Shared Spaces sample and the Hand Gameplay sample for all our developers to get started. It was great having you here. 
Uh, thank you, Naviata. That's it for today. Thank you so much, Eric, for joining us and have a great rest of your day.